Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal, and I'm here with our 2013 Land Rover LR4. This is a long-term project vehicle for us, and it's something that we spent a lot of time thinking about. How do we want to modify it, and how do we want to use the vehicle? So by knowing that the base vehicle is going to be the right kind of platform for us to, to use for a project, we started to think, okay, how do we really want to modify this thing? So what are some of the first things that we need to do? And we're just basically going to start from the front of the vehicle and go back. One of the first things that I like to do to a vehicle is install some type of bumper like this ARB or other manufacturers that produce bumpers that are similar to it. It provides a couple key attributes. One of the things that I really find valuable is in case of an animal strike, which means up here in the mountains of Arizona, driving late at night on a twisty road and a deer comes out in the lane, it's highly likely that this bumper will take the majority of that impact. And even though the vehicle may be damaged, it'll still be able to drive. And the main reason for that is it's protecting the radiator. It's protecting those very soft and sensitive components of the engine that sit out right in front that could be damaged and disable the vehicle. And then it also allows uh, for fitment of some auxiliary lights. And then it also allows, very importantly, for us to fit a self-recovery winch. So this is a 12-volt worn self-recovery winch that'll allow us, when we're out exploring solo or even in a small group, it'll allow us to clear obstacles like this if we were to get stuck. Moving a little bit further back, some of the things that we need to address, again, is uh, protection of the vehicle. So we've got a set of rock sliders that were provided by Lucky 8. And these particular sliders, they're low cost and they're made out of aluminum, which means they're also very low weight. So they provide some protection for the body. And then it also provides a very convenient step to access the, the roof rack. And then we fitted a KMR rear bumper. This is a heavy duty, all steel bumper that can be fitted with two swing outs. We elected to go with a single swing out for, this, for the spare tire. But it's a heavy duty rear bumper and that's because this vehicle has such a long overhang in the back. So departure angle from the factory is at the lower limits of what we would consider acceptable. So by fitting the lift kit and the larger tires, and then by installing some protection on the rear, if we do drag when we come uh, exiting into a, into a river bank or climbing up the rocks like this, if we were to hit that rear bumper, it'll take a really, really good hit. Very One of the last things that we tried to address with this vehicle, because we believe it's very important for how we travel, is basic loading and lashing, which means we've got to carry stuff. We've got to go camping, we've got photography equipment with us. We need places to securely store that. We need places that we can lash all of that equipment down. So we fitted an easy on rack system. It's a very lightweight rack. It doesn't follow the contour of the roof line, but it does provide us with a very, very lightweight structure up above uh, the roof line on this vehicle. And then on the inside, we installed an Adventure Trailers AT Overland drawer system. And this drawer system, it's really one of a kind. It allows you to retain all of the stock rear seats. They simply fold forward, and then these boxes attach in place. We fitted a National Luna stainless steel 50 liter fridge. It's a dual zone fridge that goes between the two rear seats. So most SUVs have what we call a 60-40 split. In this case, it's basically 33, 33, 33. You can remove that center section and install a fridge that works as a, as a nice elbow rest and real easy access to the fridge for all the occupants. And then the rest of the drawer system is all flat. So I like to use a system made by Nemo Equipment. It's a series of Cosmo sleeping pads and sleeping bags, et cetera, that all work together to allow you to very comfortably sleep in the back of this vehicle. So it makes for an all weather sleeping environment, which I believe is very uh, critical when you're in mixed terrain and mixed environments. So with all of this together, we've ended up with what I think is probably one of the best examples of a modern overland vehicle that has taken everything that we've learned and all the very best that the aftermarket has to offer and with a fantastic foundation of a vehicle, I think we've got something pretty special. And over the next year, we're gonna test it out and tell you just how it does.